I, I left Dominica on September 30th, last Friday, with the intention of discussing the climate crisis, the unpredictable nature of its effects, and the world's responsibility. On October 2nd, two days ago, Dominica experienced severe flooding and landslides. Just before stepping onto the stage, I was still checking updates on my phone. Many of my countrymen, as we speak right now, are on the ground, cleaning up and restoring our home to what it looked like just last week. Forgive me because it will be impossible to remove the emotions out of what I have to say today. Over the last decade, my homeland, the Commonwealth of Dominica, has cultivated resilience by force. Our baptism by fire was a tropical storm in 2015 that wrought more havoc than we ever anticipated. And then came the Category 5 hurricane in 2017 that damaged 90% of our infrastructure. One Young World, make no mistake, these storms are getting worse. Yet despite the worsening situation, small island nations have nothing but the empty promises of the world's hegemonies to lean on. Larger countries agreed to curb emissions and to support vulnerable nations like mine. Their performances have been abysmal. These titans, far more concerned with short-term profits, turn a blind eye to the very commitments that they made, leaving nations like Dominica to fend for themselves. Negligence of this nature borders on cruelty, as they fail not just in emission reductions and providing promised support, but also on demonstrating the slightest level of concern for those smaller than them. It is a sad fact that in Dominica, we have moved past trying to reverse the effects of climate change. There's only so much a small island can do. We have now moved our efforts to climate resilience. To become accustomed to such devastation is akin to familiarizing oneself with an abuse that lacks a clear perpetrator. We are quite literally fighting the wind. Those who can and should answer to these crimes take no responsibility. Those who could rethink their usage remain silent and fill their coffers. So who exactly do you blame when your landscapes resemble post-apocalyptic wastelands? Our only recourse is to inhale, muster strength, and begin the journey to rebuild. It is an honor to stand here discussing climate change. You may not realize, but every advocate here, every voice that has ever risen to champion the environment, stands up for the Caribbean and for every island nation across the world. Every call for responsible fossil fuel usage, environmental respect, and even the simple act of recycling echoes our plea. Today, I extend a heartfelt thank you. But it's crucial to grasp the gravity of our conversation here today. These are not just fleeting concerns, but realities that often lurk on the edge of the world's attention. It is time to bring them to the forefront. I yearn for a day when every individual stepping out of the summit, listening far away, and those who agree to do something about it, genuinely comprehends the profound impact of, the, of their choices on our shared future. When the hurricane hit in 2017, I felt it was my duty to return home and serve my country where I now support the Prime Minister in delivering social initiatives like the Future Housing Project. We have a vision of inspiring Dominicans to believe living here is a tangible reality. It is our determination to stand alongside the world's leading economies despite their apathy, despite the fact that they are responsible for 79% of historical carbon emissions. This imbalance goes beyond just environmental concerns. With each wave of destruction comes trauma and grief, a cycle that gets handed down generationally. It is truly impossible to understand the feeling of seeing everything you know reduced to rubble without experiencing it yourself. These economies 
also draw our best minds with promises of a better life, resulting in a significant outflow of talent from our shores. Yet the pull of home remains strong. Over 2,000 Dominicans, some of whom live abroad, have applied to be a part of our housing initiative. This overwhelming response is a testament to their longing to return and contribute. These are people who are more than aware of the changing tides in this world. They see that trends are shifting and they want to bring their knowledge and expertise back to their home. We have cleared all the land, completed preparations, and we are poised to start our ambitious endeavor to build resilient, energy efficient homes with storm resistant roofing that will house and protect families and potentially catalyze a new era of prosperity in Dominica. This impact will be profound. Each home is not just a structure, but a beacon of hope and a symbol of the immense potential each returning Dominican brings to our nation. The Future Housing Initiative is not merely a response to hurricanes like Maria and Erica. We don't just want to build better. It is a testament to our spirit and our endeavor to encourage our talented diaspora to return and to invest in the land that once nurtured them. Our challenge is unique. We were told stories of Hurricane David in 1979 as kids. It was a dark tale about a land once reduced to ash. Today, it is our reality. We are left to suffer the consequences of those more profitable than us. I cannot stress enough to you today the difficulty of being a developing nation that does not get the chance to develop. It is time that we pay attention to each other, like never before. Your policies cannot punch downwards. The decisions you make cannot hurt small island developing nations anymore. The promises that you made must not be empty words, but binding covenants. Now is the time that we all agree that we are the smallest among us. Hurting us is hurting everybody. I know that we are all aware that times are changing, which is why we're here today. To acknowledge the spin of the earth and how we move from current to current. But let us not ignore the smallest among us, lest we forget ourselves. Thank you.